Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. And Jeff, we are looking at Tropical Storm Debbie, expected to make landfall around Florida's coastal Big Bend area sometime Monday morning as a hurricane, likely a Category 1 hurricane. Like we say a lot with these systems, not so much focusing on the eye or exactly where it's making landfall. This is a big system covering a lot of area. It's going to have a lot of impacts. But uh, as we've seen before, with a storm increasing in strength as it approaches land, we do need to, um, or at least the folks in Florida, need to be on the lookout for uh, wind impacts with Debbie as well. Here it is on radar. Starting to get much more organized uh, than we saw yesterday. We see those outer feeder bands. They were producing some tornado warnings yesterday. I don't know um, if I've seen any today, but definitely getting more organized as it approaches the Florida coast. But Jeff, the bigger concern, I think, for Debbie is after it makes landfall in Florida and makes its way over to the northeastern um, area of Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas. You can see that track right there, that slowdown impact in that area starting starting really uh, late Monday into Tuesday all the way through Thursday, expected to dump a lot of rain. Some of those model totals that we're seeing on the rainfall amounts are, are very concerning. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you get a slow moving tropical system, look out. Um, you're going to get a lot of water and uh, Debbie looks like it's going to be one of those here in southeastern Georgia and then the Carolinas it could be a lot of water. There's still some uncertainty on this track. You know, if, if this is inland a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more weakening, if it's a little bit further off the coast, um, you know, potentially could strengthen even a little bit. And so these impacts could change a little bit here. With respect to storm surge and wind, I think the rainfall is probably getting locked in. That there's going to be a lot of rain here. Uh, one of the things, like like we've mentioned, you know, here is here's the kind of the forecast tone, and as you can see in the orange here is the tropical storm force winds. So tropical storm force winds being felt along the west coast of Florida right now, well away from the cone, and so it's not just uh, along this white area where we're going to have impacts. Impacts can be well well away. And really the, the push of water level here, the, the storm surge is kind of coming up toward the uh, Big Bend, that northeastern portion there of the Florida Big Bend coast. So between the Sawahani River and then over toward the west here, just south of Tallahassee, this is very low lying marshy area and uh, very shallow offshore waters. And you can get a really big push of water here with the winds coming from the southeast and and the south as the center kind of comes up in this direction, probably sort of in the direction, maybe a little east of Tallahassee um, as we get into tomorrow morning. And so that maximum water level rise and push is going to be here on the right side of where that center comes in. And so definitely think we could see six, seven, eight feet here. It doesn't take a lot to get storm surge here. Um, you know, maybe even 10 feet if it does strengthen up to 85 miles an hour. If you kind of look there on the radar, it's kind of fighting a little bit of dry air coming in and undercutting, but there's still some very warm water here over the next, oh, 12 to 16 hours before landfall. So still some potential for it to, to get going and produce a surge. And we're even having storm surge issues all down along the Florida West Coast today, even down at Fort Myers, um, some storm surge flooding and, and uh, areas around Tampa with that south and south-southwesterly flow on the eastern side of the circulation. And then as you, and I don't want to leave out here later early next week yep. monday tuesday as the center kind of comes up in this direction that's an onshore flow here or uh, the the winds blowing out of the southeast or south and so that's going to start to push the water up along the georgia and south carolina coast and you know areas around charleston and savannah very storm surge prone it doesn't take a lot of water to cause some issues in this area and you put that on top of this, which is an enormous amount of rain that's coming, potentially historic rainfall in Southeast Georgia and coastal South Carolina. So you can see the big cities here, Savannah, Charleston, Hilton Head, maybe getting up as far as the Myrtle Beach area. Um, you, you know, a big area here, 15 to 20, maybe even 25 inches of rain wow. and an even bigger area of a foot plus. And so flooding, inland freshwater flooding is really going to be likely the legacy here of Debbie 
as it meanders slowly here across the southeast United States into next week. And, you know, don't sleep on this threat inland here away from the coast. This isn't just a coastal issue, but inland, the rivers, the creeks, the, the low-lying areas, all of this could have very, very significant flooding. And so this is probably going to be the legacy here of Debbie uh, as we go into next week. Very slow-moving tropical system with potentially uh, catastrophic flooding in, in this area. Uh, and then, Scott, as we talked about, uh, the tropics are heating up a little bit down to the south. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, Debbie, that, that area in the Carolinas, I've been there around Savannah, very flat, very marshy. Uh, that That is definitely a concern with that amount of rain. But uh, yeah, National Hurricane Center now taking this area in the eastern Caribbean currently, moving toward the Windward Islands giving it a 20% chance of development, uh, Jeff, over the next seven days, finding a little dry air in the area that it's in now. But as it gets over to the Western Caribbean, I think it gets a little bit more favorable for development. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when it gets over there. And then uh, it does have the potential to uh, um, work its way into the Gulf of Mexico by next weekend. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. So here's Debbie up here. Um, they'll be moving into the southeast and and eventually exiting off to the to the northeast and to the right, and then back down here towards the southeast of the Windward Islands. This is our wave axis we're looking at. There doesn't appear to be any sort of low level circulation with this. Maybe some mid level spin and vorticity uh, noted with this. But as you can see, there there's not a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. It's kind of been flaring up at night and then dying off during the day, but there's some dry air here to the north that's working into the circulation. But as it comes westward through the Central Caribbean and into the, especially the Western Caribbean, as we get into later this week, things may become increasingly favorable for some development. And so we'll just have to see exactly how this works out. Does it hug the South American coast and go further south towards Central America? In that case, development would probably be a little bit slower and a lower chance. Or does it pull up a little bit further to the north? There's still going to be a trough here, depending on how quickly Debbie lifts out. Uh, there may still be a trough here in the southeast United States uh, interacting. And so if this were to uh, start to strengthen some, it's going to feel that trough and, and want to tug a little bit to the north and northwest. Uh, and so we're going to have to watch it here as we get into later this week. The ensembles, it's best to look at this time range. We're talking seven days out five to seven days out here, it's best to look at the ensembles and not any deterministic runs. The deterministic runs have been bouncing all over the place. The GFS and the Canadian have been showing some development uh, with the system and each run is different in where it goes. But if you look here at the GFS ensembles, you can see there is a cluster here in the Northwestern Caribbean. Yeah. Uh, this is Saturday morning, August the 10th, next Saturday. Uh, that, that does show some potential here for development. And then this kind of moves off to the west, northwest, or potentially uh, the northwest into the Gulf of Mexico. And we'll just have to see what kind of steering we're looking at. Um, interesting enough, it shows some pretty decent high pressure building down on, on the GFS anyways uh, here into the central plain. So that, that could help steer it a little bit more to the west. So we'll, we'll just have to see what happens down here, how well it becomes organized, if it ever becomes organized. And then what kind of track scenarios potentially will be on the table as we get towards uh, next weekend? You know, as Debbie exits, the trough is still here in the east. Does that lift out? Does high pressure build in? And uh, we'll see what, what, all, what all the players are and where they're all positioned as we get towards next week. But it's something to keep an eye on. Interest in the Western Caribbean, if you're cruising down there, going to vacation, the Caymans, Jamaica, the Yucatan, Belize, I'd uh, keep an eye on this. Um, things can be pretty favorable this time of year in the Western Caribbean, so they can get going pretty quickly. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens after that. Yep. As we've seen before, a lot of variables with this and um, uh, other systems as well. So always good to check back in. And you can do that by subscribing to the Weather Insights podcast on our YouTube channel. Make sure you click the notifications bell as well and get the latest tropical briefings and we will see you on the next weather insights briefing jeff thank you very much